Hello and welcome to Dive For You, episode two here at MSI 2023. We have just concluded the- Fuck up! Thank you, Mark. I thought, thank you. <laughs> you thought I wasn't gonna do it? I thought I wasn't sure if this is where I was gonna come. You said for sure that you were gonna like wait for me to finish a sentence and do it like a rap ad lib. I'm Dracos, Mark well, you, Z's I didn't across know from me. With, like usually rap sentences aren't like 45 seconds long. I didn't know how long the intro was gonna go. I didn't know I was I'm rapping I'm glad you two are having a great in joke kid, but do you wanna to explain to me and the rest of the audience what just happened? Well, uh, if you watch the broadcast, you'd you get it. You would know, Betty. I, <laughs> if you weren't just out sick <laughs> you, every oh, time. Oh man, I just <laughs> oh, went, I took I took a four hour uh, flight or something. I gotta take a day off, guys. <laughs> it's not COVID, but I'm, I still don't wanna come in. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, how dare you? All right, cool. It's a lot of time we're There's a stop. player named Waco. <laughs> There's a rapper named Waka Flocka Flame. I know him. He goes hard in the paint. He goes hard in the paint. He says Flocka. We say Flocka now. So Wa- this is actually, this is our kind of tribute to a recently um, removed player from this fine tournament. So oh, yep. in honor of PSG. <laughs> We're recording right after PSG lost to Golden Guardians. Pouring out for your boy, Waka Flocko. Yep. The Aphelios one trick who didn't get it in this they series. Flamed out. Yeah, they banned that champion, which I think was a good a good decision. Uh, anyway, the group draws just happened, but before we get into uh, an exciting full double limb best of five bracket, we're going to talk a little bit about the plans, um, mostly about the teams that have made it through, because... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have to pour some respect out for uh, LLA and CB Lowell winning their first international series, best of series of all time. I always tell Mark this. I think that this was probably one of the best represented i'm using the wrong words but like i think into as far as play-ins go i yeah. think that this one did everything that it was supposed to do right like we didn't watch rng slaughter everyone for eight games in a row um we you know we like the good teams got out pretty fast and then the um Wait, we didn't get to watch six games of EG versus G2, though. I thought that was that. <laughs> that kind is of, the six kind games of, where we got them, guys. We need one more to be sure that they're actually better than us. <laughs> the triple yeah. round robin. Are you going to miss the triple round robin? But I think like that it did what it was supposed to do, right? I think yeah. that the uh, each of the regions, like they got their opportunity to play against some of the top dogs. I think we saw some close games, some stomps. And then I think we also saw some pretty good like inter-regional stuff where um, like I was a little disappointed in DFM. I expected a little bit more from them. I was yeah. really impressed with loud um and then like obviously psg making it through and golden guns everything kind of went the way that we all expected but i think like as far as plans go i was pretty happy some with, of, like, yeah some of how it played out i think out. was different like gam kind of falling short was oh, not true. something that was on my radar and like dfm i think had been looked at as a team that was or like a more ljl but obviously dfm is the perpetual representative as a team and organization that was kind of on the come up that might yeah, yeah, yeah. achieve something greater but uh, you know, we'll kind of have to see what inter- future international events look like. But I think Game and DFM for me were kind of the big disappointments in terms of where we would have expected them to finish. Yeah, I think I think so. I, I, it would have been hard to call before the tournament. I will say there were some NA doubters, people putting uh, Gam and PCS. Did you do a DFM. tier list? Can I didn't do a tier list, but I, I did call my shots when Raz was on here. I got I got to throw him under the bus. If you guys yeah. didn't catch the episode, he was like, oh, man, maybe PCS is scary. Actually, I don't think Golden Guardians are going to get out. I think PCS is going to go over them. And I'm like... You are trolling, hard okay. trolling. Okay, but in Raz's defense, if PCS weren't scary, why did you ban Aphelios every game, huh? What, are you scared? That's true. Come that's, on. That's pretty coward ass move. Pretty, pretty coward. Why don't you give him his Aphelios, huh? <laughs> See, why are you holding Waco down, down if you're not scared? Uh, the other thing I said on that, if you missed it, was that I predicted um, NA to end with a better game score overall for the tournament than EU. I was throwing shots wow. at him. So. Wow. Wow. Look I had to bring guy. it up here because no one commented on the fact I said that. <laughs> I said that like, thinking that would be I like, was bold. I made an inflammatory prediction. I was like, yeah, oh, like no one cared. Of all is, the things we said. The first time I'm hearing that is after seeing the group draw, which honestly kind of low blow, Mark. Kind well, of a low I, blow. I, I said it. Go back and watch the other episode. It's, I don't it's need there. to. You said it right trying now. To, I'm trying to bully Dogna right now. Into, into taking a bet that NA will do better than EU. And but what's So far, like, what are you talking? Win record or win percentage? Because right now, Europe is undefeated. Game score percentage. So yeah, you guys are undefeated. NA has two L's that they're holding currently. Unfortunate, but you know. So right now you're in danger. You need Europe. Yeah, I made this knowing that no we one... played BLG. I made this bet. <laughs> Do you understand how low I think of EU? I know I'm playing. Do you understand knowing that I'm playing e- BLG and we're going to lose two games? I still made okay. this bet. Wow. Hold on. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but when all of our teams, uh, NA and EU alike, are inevitably defeated by LCK and LPL teams, when Mad Lions and G2 play each other, and it's a 3-2 scoreline, is that 
How does that work? How do we count that? Yeah, what if C9 <laughs> so three zero? Wipe out the team kills. <laughs> Either way, it's a 500 thing you're doing where it's like, C9 won three games. Uh, Golden Guardians lost three. Yeah. Yeah, so all I'm boy. saying is I don't know how you crawl your way out of this hole unless you're taking some some cheeky games off of our LCK. I think we can, I think we can agree that we're going to ignore the inter-region kills that seem to be yeah. on the horizon. We'll get there later. But either way, um, right. okay, so, recentering on, on the teams from play-ins that made it out, BLG, yeah. G2, and, and Golden Guardians. What you guys I think? think? Well, I think, and to the point that Raz was trying to make, I was... I'm cool. PSG is always a hard one to read because I feel like so much of the talent in that region is just getting kind of plucked away at any given moment. But um, in terms of regionally, like the regions that they're close to, I know that they've historically always been able to scrim LPL teams and they're always able to show, I think, a pretty consistently good level. So I can see how on paper you'd maybe expect more from that region. But I do think you're kind of undercutting Golden Guardians because they showed that they're pretty adaptable. Uh, I think the people will probably point to the BLG game, which I think... I'm less excited about because while that was really sick, I think a lot of that was like this Yasuo Gragas thing that BLG were clearly like, and Ben was kind of just like, don't get me wrong, like, this was great, but like Ben was also just like, what are you doing, Ben? Come on, like, take it down I a think notch. Ben was was asleep for this play in tournament because if that's what he's bringing on the main stage, he's in trouble. It's looking good for C9, is what you're saying. If that's what he's bringing <laughs> to the main ready. stage, Fudge he's, is, he's watching what licorice is doing to him. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when he did the licorice, and he's like, wait. So I'm what I'll say time. is that. When we looked at BLG, G2, and Golden Guardians, yeah. the thing that I evaluate, and so like some people are going to be like, Betty, you're G2 fan, you're obviously going to be biased, but I'll say the same thing for Golden Guardians. Whenever they were losing, it was because they were doing things and then the other team was punishing them, right? Yeah. And I think that that is very different from just losing, right? Because if you look at the series today of PSG versus Golden Guardians, pretty consistently throughout that series, everything that happened was driven by Golden Guardians starting the play, right? And so the, the entire series would, was dictated and determined by what Golden Guardians wanted to do on the map. And I think that a team that already has like a greater sense of moving the game forward is should already be regarded as higher. So when we looked at the G2 game and we look at the BLG games, I think that that was exactly the same for both of those as well. Mm. When G2 was losing, I think they were overforcing plays in mid. Caps was getting punished for it. Like they they nearly threw that Baron against, was it PSG? It was PSG, right? Mm. Um, where that game got really chaotic. Like I still felt like the G2 was always the driving force in all of yeah. those games. And they were able to claw it back. Even And then the immediate game after, they cleaned that up and they stomped their opposition, right? And some of that is the fact that PSG specifically Specifically, are like the passenger team. Yes, like they're there. It's like it's like every game that they're in. I feel like they are a spectator to their own game. Yes, I see. you know what I mean. At a certain yeah. point, they like decide to like. All right, now we're gonna participate. And it's like it's too late, PSG, or like great timing, PSG. You, you did it again. So like that. That's for me. Why coming into this one, I was surprised that people rated PSG above Golden Guardians. I didn't like go out and make any public tier list or anything. But I agree with the sentiment that like. North America shouldn't really be underestimated in plans. Like yeah. they've 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 they well, very rarely ever shown to be a bad team. The only time I remember them struggling a little bit was um the Team Liquid Mad. Was it Mad? Where Team Liquid went three one and they didn't actually finish top of their group or something. Like it's happened before, like C9. I think it was um, 2020. Uh, C9 games. played DFM before mm -hmm. and like gotten had to go out the hard way before because DFM right. topped the group. True, true, so true. They, they actually came out as a second seed before. I think if I'm not mistaken, TSM lost a Best of five to gam at twenty. No, they've won that best of five. But oh, they went to they five, went five games. games. They went five, five games. Five yeah, games. Yes. Yes. like there's like there's plenty of times to poke fun at NA, and yeah, like sure. we are definitely of the major. But they've never actually lost. The butt of a lot of jokes. But we have never failed to make it through play-ins, and yes. like to predict that is actually a massive prediction. I think people just say it willy nilly, not realizing. Agree, like, yeah, yeah it's kind of like NA law rather than actually putting any thought into the prediction. Because yeah, I yeah. think that like, and it, I mean at least on the side of PSG again, because I they did. If people wanted to predict them to win a game for Golden Guardians today, I think that's more reasonable because what we saw yesterday versus Loud. I got a little bit more scared after the Loud La series. The Loud series. Now, was Croc playing League of Legends that day? No, it's not entirely clear to me. But, uh, you know, like they showed a much more proactive game. And, and some of that was, I think, Junji just absolutely decimating Loud's jungler in the individual 1v1. Like that game looked very, both those games looked super, super unplayable. Um but like we saw a great team, different styles, different looks of team compositions. And then uh, today we did not see... I mean, Gory Gat, Yuval, 
you got. Yeah. Yeah. And we then, didn't see uh, that same version of PSG. And there were some landing discrepancies, but also it felt like the second Aphelios was taken off the table, like their bot lane was like, team, yeah. now we're the Ezreal Karma bot lane, which again worked for them domestically. Then they're like, and now we're going to do Lucian Nam. And I was just like, what is. I mean, they cool? didn't even play. So I checked their playoffs. They didn't play Ezreal once in playoffs. It's like a historic pick. Though, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's something that he's played a lot through his career, but so, like. I don't. I don't know what happened, but like that single ban seemed like it unraveled their entire draft strategy <laughs> yeah. because it was like suddenly they were like, like if everyone had shit, if they all play Jinx and we play Felios, it'll totally be totally fine. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> ah, I see you have multiple tanks. Well, my blind pick Syndra here will do some work. Well, and you know, obviously there's a flex there with the Xante and it's like trickier than that, but like, yeah. Now looking forward, the same way I'm saying it's ridiculous to predict Golden Guardians to lose and play in, it would be ridiculous to say Golden Guardians is like gonna keep this momentum and beat JDG or anything. What? Even, even most of the team remains yeah. Wow, bro. Wow. I'm just saying be Hater. realistic. I am realistic. EU versus NA in the finals all over again. We've seen this story before, Mark. When? 2019 MSI. 2019 MSI. Uh, Do you remember that well. international final? <laughs> no, where I you blocked lost? it out. No. It, was, it, it was at like 1 a.m. for us. <laughs> and like everyone went to the Team Liquid facility to like throw down. And after game one, we're like, it's going to be a fast <laughs> night and I'm not drinking anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be drinking yeah. all this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember casting that series and I was with um, Freak and Kobe. And Kobe's like a really passionate caster. Mm. And after game one, he was still like really energetic. And then game two happened. And I think game two was when Caps on the Aurelia killed both... Um, was it say? Jensen and X Smithy at the time? <laughs> Are you an EU fan if you can't just bring up MSI 2019? No, on the it's drop literally of always thought, bro. It's, it's been like it's five like, you know years. What that reminds me of? When we get to G2 versus Gen G, I've got a lot of narrative prepared. From MSI 2019 specifically, no <laughs> other events. No, no, I have a bunch of other events. Don't worry, I'm prepared. Right, well, then let's let's tease it out a little bit longer. Let's go BLG. Wait, what about uh, no, we're talking about G JDG G versus GG. We had a we're seamless transition. We're going to match up already. Okay. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. so Golden Guardians versus guys, JDG. Excellent <laughs> outline better. <laughs> yeah. Right, my bad, Mark. This my bad. Sorry, Mark. I'm so sorry. When you even have a, a laptop I'm so right. sorry, Mark. Just absolute um, chaos. So, so this is what I'll say about Golden tell Guardians. Us. Let's assume all the lanes match up perfectly and there are no individual skill discrepancies. Not too much of a gap right there. Sure. Okay. Not, Let's, not but but even once we get that, I yeah. think what we've seen is while Golden Guardians are proactive, they also just like to skip steps. Sometimes their strategic <laughs> approach is absolute diligence. Sometimes it's like, Let's see what happens. They're like, do we need to push the mid wave? I don't know. Could we cross map? I guess, but we could also just show up and maybe they'll fight us. Like it has been some suspect macro. I will say, like, overall, I still think they're, like, especially compared to the teams in plan, still a pretty, like, fundamentally clean team. But uh, if they get a lead against any any team, in this case, JDG, and we'll see who else they're, they're going to match up with it the rest of this tournament, I just, like, they're a little, uh, okay. little, little sussy. Like, so, macro-wise, sure. Like, Golden Guardians, not the strongest. Very proactive. I'm glad that they're doing stuff. That's great. But I agree. Like, I was talking with this about Mark on the cast when, like, you know, Licorice TP'd behind with the cannon. I was like, okay, question. Be honest with me. Do you think that they deliberately conceded all of their vision on the top side jungle to set up for that TP play to bait them closer to the Baron? Or do you think that they just recalled at the wrong time, conceded all of their vision, and then just decided to go for a Baron anyway? And he was like, I don't need to answer that question because they won the game. <laughs> There's, like, being consciously good at something you know where you're like oh i know all the chess strategies and i understand exactly what i'm doing and then there's the guy who's just like how does this piece move and he slaps it down and sometimes he just like you just stumble he just right hits play. it you know what i mean i appreciate the discussion around the macro but like can we go back to you just ignoring all the skill gaps that yeah. like, <laughs> i wanted i, I wanted to that. start from a position uh, yeah, of like let's like like let's just like take a breath and <laughs> pretend that everybody is equal and we can just talk about the team strategy yes. which isn't attributed to any individual which or single person yes. coaching staff i guess sorry <laughs> Uh, yeah, on the, the, that point, though, where you have maybe the most skilled roster in League of Legends right now in JDG. I, okay, we'll just jump ahead here. My favorites <laughs> to win the tournament. Uh, JDG. Your favorites to win the tournament, also JDG. And everyone was basically JDG, actually, on the previous episode as well. And then yes. I, I said T1 to go to the fan vote. 
That's why. Sweet, you just like, oh god, I can't that. wait. Once to... I realized there's overwhelming favorites, and I didn't have a unique opinion. T one flipped like, so many barons. We're literally like considering stop. You're stops. jumping. Stop jumping. Okay, all right, We're all, right, all, right all right, we'll get there. I'm following. Um, but I'm saying they got to keep up. But like, I agree with you in terms of like macro stuff, sure. But like individually, like we watch the the thing is, I'd love to give some hopium for Golden Guardians. I really would. But we watched them play against BLG, and we watched what happened bot lane, and like. But you played against Elk, and now you're playing against Ruler, and I, I'm like, I, I don't, I, you know, like Elk is good, Ruler is better than Elk is, and like by a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, the top side of the map for BLG was not very impressive this tournament. True. We'll, no. I guess like we'll Yagao about... had some oopsie. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's hard not to jump. But anyway, so like the, that evidence might not be as relevant, and I think the other big struggle too is, is well, like when Knight Kanavi three six nine. Remember, <laughs> remember, like one of the other realities about this tournament, not just this format, is the way the schedule works. Is like you got to practice a bunch for plans and you have a bunch of stage experience, but you have no, this could be a boon or this could be an absolute curse for you is that you you have seen nothing from JDG. You're going True. straight into a best of five. And so no longer is it like it is groups at Worlds where you can like adapt over a week or a week and a half. Um, you got to adapt to your plans opponents, but now for JDG, it's like figure it out. Yeah. You got three games to figure, you got f potentially five games to figure it out. Now, the same is true from JDG, and we'll see which teams that hurts and if, like, which team that's a boon for, which team that sucks for. Um, but I think for Golden Guardians, it's like, you're going to have to really be clever on the fly because you can't, there's a lot of holes in the ship you got to patch up. Gory played in the LPL before. He knows all the down low true. on these guys, so he'll give yeah. it to them. Yeah. yeah, that was... He was not didn't have a great stint there, but he was there. <laughs> he was. How does he do? We do we know how he feels on his matchup versus Knight by any chance? He's looking forward to it, I'm sure. What <laughs> What I will say is that the biggest reason why Golden Guardians beat BLG was because of a very good draft, like the Yasuo, Gragas, Cassante, like. Their bot lane got bodied, but it didn't matter because they drafted in a way that gave yeah. them ways to win and fight. What happened so, in like, the next game, Bettius? No, I know exactly what happened <laughs> in the next game. I'm just saying that like draft is a way in which you can find advantages because it's it's not like the Golden Guardians individuals aren't good enough to win if they're in a position where they can win, right? If you give them a lead, I'm confident that the Golden Guardians could close out a game against a JDG. Sure, I believe in that world. But uh, yeah. I think that you have to draft in a way that gives you options to be able to do that. Well, and I'm not saying that they have to cheese the draft, but they're going to have to, like, if you just play standard, like standard meta via Ari into a JDG, I think that you will not stand a chance. It's tough. I think there is a position right now where, like, you can... The idea of giving Knight Ari, which is kind of probably going to be an inevitability, is scary. But there are good champions into it. You can play, like, more proactive mid-jungles. You can try to blow the game open. I mean, we saw from, like, G2, and I suspect we'll see more, like, Nautilus mid or tanky mid laners. Just as much CC as you can in the mid lane, as much damage as you can in the jungle, and you just try to blow open mid. And I think that that's something that Golden Guardians are good at. I think that it's... And Knight's a choker <laughs> internationally, so there's, there's your end. I mean, that's... Yeah, True. that's... Uh, We're really... We're really nah. digging deep here, aren't we? Into the like the copium takes. It's like three six nine, maybe uh, rolls a three. Maybe this meta of probably mostly tanks on the top side or Kennen is gonna he's gonna suffer. Yeah, uh, maybe Horn has Horn a bad showed up today. Right? Yeah, we're scared. Hey, if Def can be ruler, why can't Stixay? Yeah, I don't see a leap there. I, I mean, Stixay has been decent this tournament. Stixay's been decent. He, he cool. did get bodied by Elk, but I think it's fair to say that Elk is probably the best player in play-ins, hands down, so straight up. Yeah, hey, Broken Blade is up there, bro. Let's calm down. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see how this podcast is going to go. <laughs> uh, uh, I do remember right, the draft just... point. Golden Guardians do, do often have unique drafts. I hope the Gragas Yasuo wasn't like the only thing that they had in the tank because it yeah. would feel like a bit of a waste to use on BLG. Who you're going to then, even if you lost them, you, you still have a second chance to get into the to main tournament anyway. So, like, I hope they have more flexy, tricky picks because I do feel like without going full send on like bad comps, but like all lane counters. I... I just think that it's like this first week of games, or this first set of games is going to be an absolute meta fiesta. Because again, a lot of the teams, the first seeds especially, are getting in now or have gotten in in the last couple of days. Yesterday. Yeah, Faker caught in yesterday. And from what I heard from um, some of the EU reps, teams were waiting to scrim because the draw is so close. You don't want to risk scrimming someone who is going to be your opponent. So it's like, slamming today and tomorrow. so like, yeah, you've got like a day and a half to sort your, like it's, and it's very likely that we could come in with a lot of different meta reads. Now, I think that unlike worlds of the past where sometimes there've been huge patch differences and we've seen completely different meta reads, it seems like for the most part, it's 
just about identical. Wukong dropping in Pryo, and then this new kind of like more utility, even though there was already like Gragas and, and LEC or whatever, but there's more like carry junglers showing up. But mostly it's kind of the same, so I don't know how, what that's actually going to mean. But um, yeah, in the long run, JG are my tournament favorites, and Golden Guardians, that's a, that's a unlucky draw. Yep. I don't Sorry, know if there Golden was a lucky Diamonds. draw. I think, I guess, Mad was the lucky draw. I mean, fortunately, there's a lower bracket. And that's just kind of like, right now, my prediction is 3-0 JDG. Maybe a 3-1, but... Yeah, I think 3-0 feels about right. 3-1, uh, maybe. I mean, maybe the Licorice Ascension arc continues. And this is maybe. like the Zeka angle. That is King one thing I will stuff. say, like, in general, about the eight teams that we have. Is that, like, top lane's actually, like, pretty hype. Because anyone who you were skeptical about, Licorice or Broken Blade, have both, like, had pretty standout performances so far in the tournament. Sure. And is that enough to, like, surpass your notions of any gaps that existed beforehand? Maybe not, but it's enough to make me optimistic and at least excited for how some of these matchups are going to look. Okay. Yeah. To which matchup is next? Mad versus T1. Oh, good. Um <laughs> So should we start with realism or do you want to start with the Hopium first? Well, you can start with Hopium and I'll just pop that balloon once it starts getting too big or something. All right. Okay, so the problem is that MAD internationally have a bad reputation, okay? They are the only- to from a, the, the four major regions yes. to lose in planes twice. Twice. Um, yes, however- They lost the best of five to EG last year. I mean, he's earned this because the amount of times no, that he totally had to allowed. listen to- I'm not, I don't feel bad. aren't gonna make it no, out of plans. he is stating facts right now yeah. with an X, you know? Um, no, but it's actually the proper spelling. He's just <laughs> listing the truth. It's <laughs> yeah. just true. There's no, there's um, no but, subjective opinion No, here. I know that. Um, the thing that people conveniently forget, 2021 MSI, it was Mad Lions that pushed world champions down one all the way to five games. True. And they should have won that series. If you rewatch, I forget exactly which game it was. They were in such a massive lead and then they threw it like the chokers that they are. But like the misfits before them. Yes. How many times was the most happened? Yes, exactly. But like um, I was really optimistic about Mad and then Mad was also the only team that actually made it out of groups. They beat LNG. In a t it was, was it LNG? I think it was LNG. Uh, in a tiebreaker match to make it into the um, best five. So they got 3 0 by Darmon, yeah. who did end up making it to the world finals, or they lost to EDG. Um, so, so El Yoya is a player I think that is world class. I think that El Yoya versus Owner is probably a super interesting matchup. You also have Hilly versus Carrier, Carrier which is just like, there's already been banter between them, you know, but I think that that matchup in and of itself should also be really excited. I think that. The matchups where you would skew in favor of T1 is then the actual carries. Like Gumiyushi over Kazi, you're naturally going to give the advantage. Faker over Niski, you're naturally going to give the advantage to Faker. Um, and then you look at Zeus versus Chasey. Um, I think that T1 does a lot of what Mad does just better. Yeah. Right? Like, I think that you can get into the debate about the mid to late game macro sometimes t1 like to flip some stuff but can you say the same thing about mad like they do the exact same things <laughs> they're both very talented when it comes to team fights they're both a team that often leverages their mid jungle to find early advantages the support is super active on the map and plays a wide array of different champions um like the and their, their top laner can easily play carries can also play tanks and then you've got 80 carries that just play the stock standard but they kind of clutch when they need to be like yeah. they're very similar in terms of play style i just think that t1 has way more experience at that style and um is just basically mad with with more options yeah i mean t1 are definitely also feel more consistent like cars and hill have been on a tear but they're notoriously um inconsistent players That's very true yeah. you know what i mean and i think that while i'm excited for to see if el is also going to be picking up carries and i think that like niski's gragas has been sick i don't think he'll ever get it but like i think gragas looks really powerful right now i think the champion is stupid broken like i think there's a world where if they get their picks the meta does from what we've seen on stage thus far really suit them and can really work for them but like the thing is i can't the same is also true for t1 yep well, yeah be. i think also t one super happy playing with a lot of prio stuff and just like trying to hard win lanes and yeah. yeah chasey did a lot better in the playoff run and stuff i still feel like zayus had his like little chokes in, in finals that people always are for starting sure, to say sure. is like a trend for him but like yeah. outside that he's still an insanely dominant laner he'll play Jace Nar and all this stuff. Like, we didn't see much Jace Pryo in, in play-ins, it felt yeah. like, at all. I mean, he was bringing out Yone well, at Worlds last year. Like, the man yeah. will play whatever. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, like, the other thing that's really terrifying is that, like, I'm obviously a big Lucia Nami hater, specifically, mostly for Western teams. I actually just say for all Western teams, because um, I just don't think we execute it well enough. But, like, that is not a problem for Gumakaria. And I, while Lucian will 
almost 100% be banned. Like there's a world where T1 can just draft a bot lane like that, send owner top as they so consistently do. Because honestly, this T1 lineup feels, there's some improvements and there's some changes certainly in how they play the game, but it feels so similar to the lineup that we saw at Worlds. And a lot of that is like owner pretty consistently looking to set up top for success, pathing to the top side. It's not every game, but like I, if T1 don't want to handshake on like the scaling meta, I'm nervous as to what the early game looks well, like. I, what I'll say is that a big advantage that Mad had specifically over the LEC teams was their one, two, three. Like they had so many great options specifically because of their massive priority on Gragas and their ability to play at top, jungle, and mid. And then the way in which they could combine that with a wide array of different options, whether it be Jace Gragas, whether it be the Jace Vi, whether it be like whatever they wanted to do, they had, and then if you had to ban away the Jace, they could still play the Annie. And so they could still do like Annie Vi, they could do Annie Wukong. Like they, they had, they could basically, like the meta was perfect for them in terms of what they wanted to pick. And so if you didn't ban something, they were guaranteed to get it. And that meant that their bot lane could then just play whatever they wanted. They would have to play Zeri. They could play Ezreal if everything else was banned out. So they had like the most draft flexibility domestically. And the question is like, do I believe that they would have that same level of flexibility against T1? Sure. Can they still have access to all of those champions? Yes, I believe that. But is that to say that T1 also doesn't have access to all yeah, of those I don't champions? Think it's the like the edge that, that it was in, yeah, in exactly. LEC is the struggle, right? Because like BDS had a very clear way that they wanted to play the game. And sometimes because they had their very specific prior exactly. picks, like it just let Mad get away with, in hindsight, at the time it made sense, but in hindsight kind of murder in terms of like them getting everything that they wanted in the draft. And it's just... A lot of that isn't the same case. And again, as like the Lucianami is an example, but there's a lot of things that you put a ton of faith in T1 to just bust out. Like Zeus can't, you know, he's never getting Jace, he's never getting Kennen. And it's like, okay, but you have to give him something. You have to give him something. Something has to go through picks and bands. And it's it's T1 are a much harder puzzle to figure out for Mad, even if they have a lot of things. Like a Gragas flex, wouldn't be surprised to see a not flex come in as well. But True. even those flex picks aren't enough in my mind to break open a T1 draft. I feel like that's going to have to be the angles or some things that they can go and just throw T1 for a loop and have to adapt in the draft. Because otherwise, the, the thing that I was going to say, like the skill matchups as well, just like things that you think are lanes that you could handshake before that now you can't and you suddenly get slammed on. I think that's exactly what happened in Golden Guardians in their yeah. series versus BLG where Elk's like, eh, no, you think you can just like take Zeri with some like weak ass laning support yeah, exactly. and like, nah, yeah, you're yeah. going to get absolutely destroyed. And I yeah. I worry for some of those similar matchups where like in EU, you can play domestically these more about roaming play style challenge champions easier but then like now you're roaming to a lane that's just permanently shoved in and you're like half health because you're just taking worse trades and these kinds of things and yeah. it makes it a lot harder to well, i feel like play that style the uh, i'm not entirely bought in in terms of bot lane for that for europe only because bot lane for us this year has been like the most competitive it's ever been like we have a pretty stacked bot lane especially when you sure. looked at like we had upset i mean comp didn't have the best year but upset hans we also had uh, Crowny, like we had a really lot of strong AD carry. So I, like, I'm not too worried about Kazi specifically going into that matchup. I'm, it's more about how does the team stop T1 from diving Kazi level well, three, level five, level six, level seven. There's <laughs> definitely going to be to a certain degree. And like, for me, the support role especially is really important because oh, yeah. there's like I a mean, huge that, arms race in terms of picks because I think that like, let's just say like you're handshaking on Jinx Ophelius. Probably not, but like maybe there's something like that. Let's say Lucian always sure. off the board, Zeri, Zaya. Just for just humor me. Two champions who basically want to do the same thing, right? Like yeah. so often that lane is decided by support counter pick, and like there's a lot of stuff that we maybe got comfortable with I mean, in Europe true, yeah. that like Caria will break that, and that's going to be really tricky. And like at the same time, yeah, Hillsang can play a pike every once in a while. Like Hillsang will find an opportunity to play something unique, but it's like he's going up against a player who. I have literally zero doubt in my mind can play everything that he can Carrier play. literally destroyed the support meta in spring. For he will. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he like, will I'm going to pick like, whatever in your supports around the world are going to have to try and scrims yeah. now. <laughs> Suck it. So like, this is my point. This is terrifying. is yeah, because exactly. it's like, I believe there's a world where Hilly can still get to play these roaming champions, but it will probably be, again, a handshake where you're like, we're both roaming. Like, have fun solo landing 80 carries. Like, yeah. we're both leaving. Or, or, I mean, like, the thing is they love playing with, like, again, Pryo. So, like, they'll take a weird support counter pick. They're like, yeah, I'm going to play the brand today or something. Yeah. Like, you're just like, ah, Ah, shit, we didn't practice this. Well, <laughs> and the thing is, is like the matchup I'm most excited for is owner versus El Yoya, and especially like for this sure, mid jungle, because yeah. I think mid jungle is so important. But like mid jungle breaks down very quickly, very early if enemy is able to get push and you're not ready for it. Like that's why G2 love Lucianami so much, is they get pushed bot and suddenly Yike gets to do whatever the hell he wants on the map. You know what I mean? It frees him up so much. It's not always about building huge leads.
And the things I'll say is that, like, I think El Yoya at every international competition he's gone to has overall looked very good. Um, I think Niski, this is a really big opportunity for him. The irony is that his Gragas, the thing that he's most well known for and has the most success on this year, he picked up because of Faker. Um, <laughs> and now he's going against the guy that basically encouraged I mean, him but to I'm play. Just, I'm saying if Gragas can never make it through, like, but, unless there's a new I mean, counterpick, this won't. champion is so dumb. But my point is that, like, I think Niski, this is a really big opportunity for him as a player to prove that he can compete internationally because it's like it's a very well-known thing among fans where people will say he's like the gatekeeper yeah, if yeah. he is the best mid in the region then that's a concern that people should have because he can't compete with international mids and i think that people look at him very similarly to how they look at yagao and that he's more of a facilitator rather than a carry um so him versus faker it's going to be really important for him um and what i'll say is that also mad have been consistently underestimating uh i don't think like right now we're underestimating them I think yeah. that like based on what the information that we have, I think it's fair to rate T1 as the favorites. Sure. I think the vast majority of people, but it also wouldn't surprise me if Mad did come up with very good draft prep. And also like a bit of a niche thing, but the Korean teams can be quite stubborn when they start international tournaments. So during their first week is normally when they'll drop a single game. Like, you know, when we used to have the best of ones at Worlds and MSI, two, like it was always like up. week yeah, one, yeah. Korea would always drop a couple days. Like I think T1 last year went three, two in group stage or something. Um, just cause like they are quite attached to their old meta. They scrim quite insularly and then they come to the event. And then when they start scrimming the teams here and pick up the new meta, then they very quickly. But uh, within a single best of five, I don't think that that's necessarily enough to i mean the, the I, I really like this copium angle where you're like listen sometimes the korean teams drop some games they need some time to scale up and because now instead of playing across six days of exactly. best of ones yes. and then they have that time to learn right it's all happening day one yes they can they can lose uh -huh. the alternative take being that the best of series that they absolutely clap everyone in, that just one. start right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's also, there's not yeah. any of this fun oh, that you yeah. get to have yeah. Yeah. where you win the single one because you yeah. put the Baron. You yeah. know, like that doesn't happen now. And even if that does happen, you play three more games and then you lose. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what you said. You said good draft prep, this, this, that. Yeah. Put a number on it. <laughs> No, I mean, Bro. I think 3-1, T1 would be my prediction. Um, I could Whoa. I could see a world of a 3-2, like I can see it, but 3-1 is is my, for T1 is, is what I'm expecting. I think 3-1 is fair. I think that it's really hard because I think that your point, both versions of the point, both sides of that point are super valid that like, hey, like the best of five starts now. But I don't think it, for me, it's not about like the Korea's historical starting slow. I think that is also valid. But for me, it's just more about like, what is their read on the meta? Because again, disastrous reads on the meta, whether it's the LPL, the LCK, or any other region, definitely can have, have ruined really, an yeah. entire weeks of groups with people being way too stubborn to adapt. And this is the first time we're going straight to best of five, which could just mean we get clapped. Admittedly, but, sometimes that is Europe with Garen Yumi. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, you, want some games. <laughs> you are the innovators. You're like, you're you're the slamming innovators, Nautilus yeah. mid already yeah. right now. You know? Look, I'm holding on to that Doinby scrim yeah. rumors. You know what I mean? I just keep refreshing that thread. <laughs> the the Doinby scrim rumors before the good team showed up. <laughs> hey, BLG was here, yeah, bro. Yeah, it's so funny because it's like <laughs> they were just beating BLG. That's yeah. all that scrim they were. That's what that says. He's like, <laughs> he heard rumors from the one Chinese <laughs> team there, which is BLG. <laughs> 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 giving hope for C9 yeah. <laughs> oh god Any, anyways I, I, I think uh, what's your number I think 3-1 I think yeah. you, I didn't know if you were going to go full no no no, 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 no. chest painted EU fan no my hopium is with G2 we'll get to that later though alright so, <laughs> let's, let's put it off for a little bit then C9 versus BLG before we speak to C9 I think just recapping BLG's run yeah both more impressive in some areas and less in others. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that part of the reason why we got to call Elk definitively the best player of Plants because other players on BLG were definitively not the best players in Plants. And they needed him so <laughs> Yeah, they, they gave that. Elk an opportunity to look like a big carry. He absolutely stuffed Sticks A into the locker, mm -hmm. bullied him in lane, yep. Yep. Uh, got massive leads every single game, basically. And Golden Guardian's game plan was like, do anything we can to find ways to kill Elk. Because Yasuo Gragas. Gragas worked great, but it's also because Yagao was like losing lanes to Miru, the LLA mid of ASOL Jace matchups. And like Bong was going toe to toe with Bin, trading solo kills back and forth. And like, you know, it, can Bin, we just say Rip Bong, by the way? Rip, Rip, Rip Bong. Bong. Great I hate player. Both of you. Great player. Sad to see him go. Um, but yeah, just like Bin did have some good games. It wasn't like he was a, a trash can, but like, 
there were also games where like licorice is getting the better of him, which is just not something for who's a top well, laner who's known for well, dominating the LPL. Yeah, yeah, you would dominate expect. like again, it, yeah, being but, forced onto tank duty by licorice. <gasps> you know, it's I, drama. I mean, like I will say that I think that it's easy to tunnel on where Bin underperformed versus how the the team didn't play around Bin. Yeah, like the sure. way in which BLG won games. Like the reason why so many people say Bin carried them here was because they played through top. Yeah. Elk was a weak side player. That's what he was. And then they lost to JDG. And all of the LPL casters have told me that like since that loss to JDG, they've just kind of reevaluated how they how they want to play. And like you think about some of the best characters, like remember Jax used to be like a blind pick. Like you mm-hmm. could just go for that whenever you wanted to. Um, I think that Cassante being really strong in the past. Well, actually, even though he wasn't a big Cassante player, was he? He was still like uh he, he played it every now and then, but I think in playoffs he didn't actually play it once. I think he liked the more so. Yeah, I remember exactly. His Fiora very vividly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like they they were a top side focused team. And I think that with how the meta has shifted, it's been harder for him to actually carry. So they've had to shift their priorities over to Elk and like the big reason why golden guardians got stomped was because like i don't know if you guys remember but game three they stacked four waves on that bot tower and there was no one there to help them <laughs> they had a four-man dive bot and stick say lost like three to four waves of farm um and it's it's a tried and true strategy that yagao is very experienced in he is he is the original like tf player like Talia, like Lissandra, he's more than happy to push Rome, push Rome, push Rome. Like you're, you're, you're stretching the word original a little bit there, I mean, but sure, in recent but like, history, sure, sure. I'll I mean, but that. he's that's always been his role, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I mean, like his the most reason... played champion is Vagar. You know what I mean? Like it kind of tells sure. you exactly what he's there for. He's set up yeah. utility. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that um, the reason why Bin doesn't look as good is because he just doesn't get the same resources that he had during the regular season. And I think that that's a very normal for him. Sure. Um, and so like, I'm some, I'm not going to look, because I think his sound game was very good. Like his, he was unkillable. I think it was a great pick. And I think that he played the champion very well. Yeah, um, I don't think it's like condemning Bin, but I don't think you can also just say like completely it's not because he got resources. Because he did, there were unforced errors. But I think in the same vein, like the easier logic for me is just like, this didn't look like, BLG full strength. It honestly just looked like they were trying stuff. Maybe that's a, a well, worse Well, again, I, just, I think it's a different BLG. I think that's the the take. I just think that we have a different to the BLG that we're used to. And I, um, I think the bigger question is like, when you compare it to C9, I thought that their early games were inconsistent. I don't know if you fully agree with that, but like my biggest takeaway from them during the uh, the final, and maybe that's not fully representative of them as a team, but like their early games are super inconsistent in terms of their ability to build the lead, and that is the biggest concern for me when they uh, when they when they actually go up against BLG because matchup for matchup, I can definitely see a world where like I'm not that concerned for uh, for C9, but um, I think that that early game, the way in which C9 actually play through their leads and is, is where I have bigger I mean, we, were, we were kind of joking about like liquor, uh, Fudge watching Licorice go toe-to-toe with Ben and being like, really? Okay, you know, <laughs> and like that's not that much of a joke because Licorice has, or excuse me, Fudge, God, all the fucking food names and talking. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Fudge has ran NA tops like yeah, 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 consistently yeah. for multiple splits now. Like there's some times where he doesn't look the best and he has his games, blah, blah, blah. But like generally speaking, Fudge is the de facto king of top. I just love it because like I don't think Broken Blade is the top father in Europe right now, but like that's That's his nickname. And so it just feels like the mafioso family is like meeting the the, the LEC, LCS families coming together to figure out how they're they're going to like resolve the issue. You know, but like um, I'm just saying that like if if you're watching this as C9 and you're like, oh, wait, Ben isn't like trashing licorice and like actually licorice is going toe to toe with him yeah and like i beat licorice every single day of the week you know like you have to be feeling better than you were coming in even though he's not getting the resources but at least like um also with yagao not looking particularly good i think that's the big part is like yagao goes to whichever lane they want to be playing through but like he wasn't really getting bot lane to be fair we're talking about like where are the resources going it's like yagao was just chilling for the most part and like bot lane was mostly on its own with shun kind of camping but shun also did some random stuff too so like in, in a lot of ways, I didn't see like crazy map movements where I'm like, look at this stack wave, four man dive, the coordination out of BLG, whether that was top or bot, I didn't really see that much of that. It felt, um, 
loose. Yeah, it felt like, and maybe it's again playing to the level of your competition. This is a very real thing, and maybe as the stakes raise, you know, BLG will just keep stepping up. Um, they're a team that also, like a lot of the teams here, defied expectations <laughs> and like were not expected to be as good as they were and ramped up a lot in playoffs. Um, so they're a team that I think can get a lot better. But I think if they don't improve from here, it goes from what was like a expected LPL two seed smash of yep. NA because that is historically what would happen to like a do you see that have an angle here okay so wait let's invoke league of legends superstition law mm. normally there's a single lpl seed they always do well at msi now that we've added a second one have we invoked the lpl worlds clause where one team one is team destined to implode <laughs> does it work what is the implosion threshold for the lpl is one team guaranteed to just Turn into dust in front of our very eyes. I mean, honestly, you talk about the C9 inconsistent early games. That is very true. But it's because they're just complete burger flippers. <laughs> <laughs> like, m plays Jace, and he's like, either I'm 10-0 or I'm 0-10. There is no like in-between yeah, 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 yeah. no in with him. And, like, obviously, Blabber's down for whatever. He's like, yeah, bro, let's go. And so... <laughs> Uh, well, the, on the podcast, I mean, that's, see, that's, that's he literally, just that. that is like the team spends just like support king, bro. He and did the call me emoji. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hand uh, 10, I think. No, uh, if you, in Discord, if you write call me, this is the emoji that you get. Wow. Yeah. I'm the boomer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But the point is, they're like, they're, they're pretty ride or die homies. And so like when someone's that's going good. bad, they're like in the play. And they're just like, what's one more kill? You know, what's one more kill if we end this one too? Uh, so they, they do have games where they look terrible, but they also were easily once Eminence joined the most dominant team in NA, uh, just like smashing people. Yeah. Know, I mean, the, things went well. So if you're getting this like really coin flippy game state where they're just like constantly taking skill matchups and just like trying to throw down with BLG and BLG are not playing well and you're watching Yagao just like lose random matchups, then it's a little so scary. This, this feels like this is like the I'm, easy bet for you. If like I, I NA is going to upset a I team. I feel like this is being right? really downsold right now. I just, I, I do not think that they're as bad as they portrayed. I like, agree. No, that's what I said. Is yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think they play to the level of their competition, but like as an NA fan, you're I guess just like, hoping that is the reality. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, fair. Yeah. I, this I, is this is the cope angle. Exactly. You have to remember, we're not yeah. talking about LCK versus <laughs> LPL or LPL <laughs> versus LPL, LPL here. LPL fans here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, okay, okay, great. Wow. Wait, 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 let's misrepresent. I mean, I think it's super fair that we can all agree that of the four teams that are not from the West, BLG is the most beatable team. Right. Yeah. Like when we look on paper, like Gen G, T1, JDG feel like very massive mountains to climb. Yeah. Whereas the fact that we have seen BLG actively struggle, that does make it easier. But I still think that they are still a very smart team. Um, to me, they are just going through a process where they realize the meta is different and that they need to play more towards bot than they do top. I but mean, yeah, like they're not, put, I don't know, like we don't even have to take it that far. Like just obviously what's showing up on stage, whether that's playing to the level of their opponent or adjusting their meta read sure. or regardless, like we're, we're all kind of generally aligned that we're not, this is not full strength BLG, or at least we do not expect this to be full strength BLG, which I think is super reasonable. But as Mark pointed out, if it is, Was Berserker MVP? He was MVP, He right? was MVP. So do you think Berserker MVP can be Elk? No, I think Elk is probably better anyways. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. I mean, like, no offense to Berserker. I, I love that kid. But, He's amazing. But but he won MVP he in your won league. MVP. I don't. He's uh, the most he valuable. Won, he's, he's, he's the, the most, most valuable, <laughs> valuable player, I, yeah. Mark. He must be better than the finalists of the LPL. Yeah, but you got smashed by Ruler, you know? So, like. Yeah, and that's and, a pretty low bar. Gula, I'm Gula, kidding. I'm Gula, kidding. Gula <laughs> definitely didn't have a great time against Berserker and Group A of Worlds last year with Sven as his bot laner. So Sven has leveled up a fair amount, but I think you saw it in finals. Uh, even sometimes some mistakes coming through in the post game interview. He said he didn't feel like he played great that day. Okay. Yeah. And I think for a lot of us, it's the combo of on versus Elk versus uh, Berserker versus Sven, that's where fair. it's like. I, I don't know. Like, I want to believe in Sven. I think he actually stepped up a lot this split. He was a lot better. He had some really interesting picks and really came into his own as a support. Whereas, like, last year he was just Enchanter one trick because that was kind of the meta. Yeah. But it's still, like, the weak point. It's, it's the I, clear weak point. Like, of course, anything can go wrong. Bin can start stomping Fudge again. But, like, this is the something that's going to be a problem, most likely the whole series. And I hope that that unique picks, I hope we see a lot of that from our Western representatives because I do feel like, given the short turnaround, like, if there was ever a time you could just throw wacky picks out there. It's in a bet. It's in a double limb bracket in best of fives when nobody really has a hundred percent confidence that they know what the meta is. Like now is the time to get weird with it. I feel like so. I would love to see that, and I do think that 
this is this might be the West. Like just to lump both of our regions together, this might be the West's best shot to win a best of five. We haven't got to G2 yet. Don't worry. Ooh. I got you, baby. I got you. We'll get to that in a bit. I know, now. but I'm wondering what your <laughs> angle is here. Okay, but um, what's the score then, boys? What number are you putting on the table? 3-1. <laughs> Three, maybe 3-0. Three oh. I think it's 3-0. I think it's a 3-0 for BLG. Really? Yeah. I don't think you guys have this in EU, but like... 3-1 three three is the coward's bet. Yeah. Yeah. Rex was yeah, actually, he came coward. on you like, you want to call it 3-0, but that sounds not hype, so you call the 3-1, but there's no way it's a 3-0. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but what do you believe, Mark? What's your score? I don't, yeah. I can't. It's like, I would honestly say 3-2 if I believe that this is like BLG, because like... I can see the world. Yeah, it's like, okay... If you play at this level, BLG, and this is really what you're bringing to MSI, and C9 has like done anything in the off, like the, the downtime to yeah, improve yeah. or anything, um, then like it is actually a, a close matchup because C9 beat the hell out of Golden Guardians despite not playing super clean in finals, and ran North America for most of the the second half of the the split. So if Golden Guardians is testing BLG, then it actually is like pretty close, I think. Yeah, I I'll just, give you I'll give you the BLG three two. I'll give it to you. That's my number. Solidarity and looking like idiots when it's a 3 yeah, that's fine. Honestly, right. 3 goes can dance in our graves. I'm not yeah. trying to dance in your graves because like I want C9 to win. Like I don't like that prediction. I want any Western team to beat their opponent because it makes things more interesting. But I'm just like, on the one hand, I kind of believe. But on the other hand, it's like, Elk is really good. Elk is insane. Elk is He's going to really be the best good. player in the series. And so like really if like, you know, if Ben just plays Scion every game or tank top every to game to and they front to back i think they just win and i just don't like yeah. and again c9 again you can make things happen but i just I, 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 I think you made a really good point about it being like a reimagining of blg because coming into the tournament like the the narrative of like what this team is and how they play is elk weak side like you said and snowball top and because they haven't done that and yagao hasn't done a ton it's like you kind of just like well so what is this team and it's like the the late game bomb that can just pick Sion on top and not give a shit yeah because like, like scale and win the, the one thing at this point regardless of their you know whatever they were doing regionally the one thing we've seen at msi and the one person we've seen at msi be really consistent is elk and like yeah. so like again though like the the biggest variable that, that we that, don't though. have like because it was easier to talk about t1 and um mad because we haven't seen either of those teams yeah it's easy to talk about gdg versus gg gg because we've seen gg play and then like because we have a reference of blg it's easier this one we actually just have no idea what c9 looks like which is the biggest advantage that they have coming into this series the blg have shown a formula with which they can be beaten thanks to golden guardians yep. they've also shown priority picks and they've shown a style that they have moved away from a carry top play style which is a massive advantage for cloud nine the question then becomes if cloud nine comes in with a really smart draft game one um, I, I imagine it'll be a coin toss that decides sides, and let's say they get blue game one, and they have like it a really good draft. Might be the upper seed gets. Uh, it's, I think it's probably upper tier seed. One, oh, you reckon? Or tier two team. Yeah, maybe. BLG's tier three. So maybe, I, maybe. I assume everyone who didn't play in planes has sides. I mean, maybe I'm that's the case. Sure. I don't know either. I don't know the official ruling there, um, but either way if they can get like a good blue side draft and they're able to take game one the question then becomes what else do they have prepared and how quickly can plg adapt um and i think the blg showcase that they can be quite quick at adapting thanks yeah. to what how quickly they ban out the yasuo and kind of dismantled that composition from coming back but um that's the biggest thing for me in cloud nine they haven't shown any gameplay yet i really can see it being a three two and i wouldn't be surprised if uh c9 when mark and i were talking about the group draw we were saying that for both europe and na the best matchup is an eu versus na one we yeah. wanted g2 versus c9 because we could both see them beating each other um <laughs> and then we were like the next best bet would be blg right yeah. like after that of the options available i definitely want blg to be the uh, opponent that i get and so i think that there's a real world where cloud9 can win but i don't blame you for going three zero BLG. well and i think the biggest problem with this like data set that we have is essentially it's three games for blg because like the other two was pretty stompy maybe you mm -hmm. want to talk about it yet like but this it's not a super useful data set either way great like, you know what I mean? And so it's like in the same way that we can use it to say, hey, here are some of BLG's potential weaknesses. You can also say, hey, we really didn't learn a lot about this team. Like you talk about the Yasuo thing, but that's like one game they got Yasuo Gragas, they banned it and they had nothing else. Like we didn't, yeah, and, we did not learn a lot and while in it's this plan. Best of one still, it is like that kind of vibe where like anything can kind of happen in a single game. And like we've seen plenty of times like FPX when they won Worlds, like they dropped a lot of best of one, didn't look that they hot. almost didn't make it out of groups. Yeah, like, they almost yeah. didn't make it out of groups, getting sliced. And it's like, whoa, what's going on here? And then, they win worlds and yeah. so like there's very much this like ramp up potential that like again i don't really think that that was blg's level 
But that's fair. And then also the other argument is, even though we haven't seen anything from C9, BLG's warmed up. They're used to the area now, like they're used to the games. Like you can spin it either way that you want if you really yeah, think I mean, about it's it. Tight, so. Again, the schedule is really, really tight. It's really tough, especially if you lose here and you have to play your next uh, elimination match in the same week. That's like very stressful. The nice thing is C9's been boot camping for a while. So they're not oh, like, they? yeah, they're, they're not like JDG and uh, Genji and all these teams that are like flying in last minute. Oh. They've actually been in Europe for quite a bit, if I remember. Like they, they are one of the teams scrimming. I didn't here. know that. I think, go, I nice. think. I could be mistaken, but I remember Rookie Maneuver taking oh, jet lag out as a potential excuse. did tell me that he had uh, That one you'd have to swim home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. All right, that was my three, two, three, two, three, three, zero. Team. That was my, yeah, I'm three, still zero. predicting them to lose, but it's closer than you would have yeah, thought. Yeah, that's fair. So okay. now it's your turn with the... Okay, so do you want to know the fun fact? Yeah, sure. G2 have never lost to Genji in a best of five. Ever. Sample size is Two. Mm. And it was three zero three one. Yeah, they got their numbers. They yep. Can... Like so, you know, when the what whole year like did they play, I don't remember. It Yo, was top your head. twenty uh, twenty twenty. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, slap the face. That'll bring it back. It wasn't twenty nineteen. You need help. Where was the other one? I do need oh, help. No, I've been slapping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it wasn't 2018, right? That Genji busted out completely. So I'm just trying to understand the significance because, like, at this point, the G2 lineup has changed so many times. Yeah, of course, it's, it's like, a completely different G2 lineup. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm a completely saying, different Genji lineup. Line. Line. What know, are you talking about? <laughs> the hell's this Pays guy? Yeah, I yeah. Like ruler, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that I will give this credit to Kajal. Because this isn't my original point, and I do have to credit him for it. Mm -hmm. He made a very valid point, which I'm super bored on with, which is that like, if G2 were a stock standard team that just played the traditional meta picks, I would heavily favor Gen G because I do believe that when you when like they are the smartest team in the world, like it is without a question that they have the best I mean, macro they on are the planet. Super ridiculously turbo consistent. Yes, they are like they they just their understanding of the game is the highest in the world. And I think that if you give them a standard game of League of Legends, they just will not lose. Right. And I think that one of the big surprises coming into the final with T1 was how much scrappier and proactive they were in the early game compared to the previous best of five that they had played, where T1 just kind of dominated and snowballed from the early game. Mm -hmm. Um but the reality is, is that when you enter the mid to late game, like their objective setup is consistently flawless. Their vision control is always extremely good. They manage their waves incredibly well. Like they just, they, they have such a good head on their shoulders combined with the fact that they have very talented individuals pretty much across the board, right? Yeah. Um, the, the problem for them is that G2 are the least standard League of Legends team on the planet. Like stylistically, they could not be more opposite from each other. Like G2 will draft the most ridiculous stuff that you have never seen before. And while sometimes it works in, like we remember the Pantheon from the regular season that just dumpstered top lane. And the day after that same Pantheon got absolutely stomped. I think same right? series that Pantheon got absolutely stomped. Oh, was it a series? Was I thought a series. it was a regular, regular three, season. Three, three, okay, okay. Um, but like they're a team that just don't play traditional league, right? Yeah, they break that. They literally like the whole, they're the defy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they're on brand yeah. they're on brand asset at yeah, this point they are. G2 like, don't do something greedy or risky like, never I was, I, was, I was talking to Roman and he was like yeah we just brought out Nautilus and Scrims and then everyone started playing Nautilus and Scrims like, yeah, it's like, like some big giga brain thing it's just like, like yeah let's try it they just try all sorts of things and like yeah. they, they look at the patch and like they are the, and T1 know this first hand like the pike top like the, the this G2 like for a while lost that soul of creativity but I can promise you with this roster it is very much back um, and they are willing to play and sometimes they cook way too much like sometimes they draft in a way that, that like it just shouldn't work I remember their first Nidalee game I didn't really love it I think that they just won I didn't like their second Nidalee game either yeah. I think it's just fun I just don't like Nidalee I don't think it's but, good uh, but I like the Nautilus but the um the ideas that they have completely go against everything that is conventional, right? They aren't yeah. just first picking via every game. We know that they can play it, but they won't do it. They will cook up different yeah. strategies. They have definitely something new prepared for Gen G. And I think that that is the thing that can catch a team like Gen G when like, they are the most buy to book team you can you can find. That's not to say that that's a bad thing, right? Because their understanding of the game is an incredibly high level. But G2 just like draw on the covers, they'll rip out the pages, like they just don't yeah. care. You get the do idea. you want to do can the crazy meta? Can you do a more few metaphors? more metaphors for us? Like, I'm just not sure. I think, I think. My point is that stylistically, there's a big difference. That's the only point. Stylistically, there's a big difference. And credit to G2, if things continue 
and they're the Nautilus uh, originators. They do seem to be the team that is defining the meta right now. Um, they brought out the Kha'Zix, other people are playing the Kha'Zix too. And so if it is going to be utility mid carry jungles, if we're going to see a lot more of that, um, which I, I like and I expect to see more of, I think they're they're the team that feels like they're one step ahead right now. And I think that is a big boon. I don't think the meta is as flexible as it was in the Pike top era, but I do and think that, that course, flexibility yeah. is big. I think sometimes it's a liability because um, as you said, they sometimes they cook too much. And also sometimes these compositions that they draft um, are just much more limited in how they can win the game. You know what I mean? Like true. there's also there's true. a reason why like, uh, you know, like these Aphelios comps feel so good is because like if you get a lead, they're insane. If you don't get a lead, you still have windows of opportunity to come back if your opponent isn't just like absolutely blasting you. And I think a lot of the times the struggle with G2 drafts is that like, yeah, some they of these changes. into a corner. Yeah, yeah, and like that's the Pantheon, right? It was like Feast or Famine. Like the first game, it looked sick because it got a ton of attention and never went to lane. It was yeah. alting everywhere. Broke away, looked like a god. And then he had to sit in the lane for a while and he did he nothing. Once, yeah, and a flash. champion doesn't do anything. Yeah. And I think that um, it can be tricky. Like Nidalee is a champion that I'm very nervous about for them. I'm really scared about playing that, especially because I, Peanut is a guy who is like super creative. And I think that... I think creativity, if they are going to win, is going to be what wins them. It's going to be creativity. It's going to be like classic G2 plays because G2 still are one of the teams in the world that like they've done it since 2019 and they continue to do it. They will drop a tower. They will drop an entire side of the map to put four people on the opposite side of the map and just like for way longer than you expect them to. They love overlighting side of the maps. And I think that that can catch a team like Genji off guard, but I still think Genji are the, are the favorites yeah, here. Of course they are. Okay. Just Don't make forget, Chovy's also a, uh, a choker. <laughs> uh, I think it's funny how many. Okay, just a Hayes small, is a rookie. Uh, <laughs> Hayes is a rookie. He's going to collapse. Hans under the Summer, sheer his pressure. last international performance. Choki versus clapped. TRX was rough. Though. I mean, like, well, the so, Choki point is not. I mean, but it's where I want to go with this is okay. that it's so ridiculous that these Eastern mids pick up this like choking moniker as they play consistently in like so much higher level skill it's environments. True, yeah. and they only fail really in those environments. So it's like, okay, so Chobi sometimes loses to like Faker. <laughs> and people and like Yagao sometimes loses to Knight or Knight loses to Yagao or they both lose to Zeka Cap randomly. Yeah, but have you considered that Caps will lose to anyone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll, he'll lose to a like, diamond one really like, one yeah. trick on it. Like Yagao <laughs> choked in semis because they didn't make finals and Knight uh Chovy choked in semis, but then Knight choked in, in okay, over there. And and you don't understand, you don't understand. Because LP Hell and L C K players are chokers. LEC and LCS players are bad. Uh, That's the difference. <laughs> when we don't show up, we didn't yeah. choke. We, we suck, suck and no one expects so anything. Huge, uh, Faker's a huge choker. He yeah. lost how so many finals so many times? Dude, he keeps 17 was his last title. Bro. Dude, this guy is a choker. Yeah. Choker. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps dropping in the big games. He makes a Super Bowl every freaking year. You know? What a choker. How dare he? Yeah. Uh, Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the the... The concern being like Pace absolutely is incredible. Doran stepped up a lot in, in the postseason. Uh, yeah, and Doran would have been like the shining light for anyone trying to cope for an angle yeah. on how you were going to come back into <laughs> yeah. the series, and right? Like just had and a great series. And like even if and, again he doesn't get Gragas, he doesn't get as many of those picks. It's like, well, Broken Blade's going to do some wacky and, stuff, and, and then we're still going back to wacky stuff anyway. It's not it's about not Doran like he at all. To do that anyways. He plays Jace, he's the second most played champion, eleven games. Like that's the thing about the LCK tops is even if they are like the non-resource heavy ones, they all still have the pocket carries. Like back in the day when like Kenan, they all they all, play, they all play Camille back when it was a yeah, like Camille it's, meta. It's like oh well, like maybe our best carry tops can play Camille. And they're yeah, like man. every single top laner yeah. has a Camille. Yeah. And yeah. reminder, we've been lulled into a false sense of security here, but like we were basically as regions combined forced onto orn duty for many years consecutively because our top laners literally could you know not get you are not play Camille. No, no no not just could not play it could not get through a laning phase without dying to it <laughs> yeah and then if you did that sometimes they still have weird counters like here's a quinn for you ah! <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so anyways point being broken blade has looked very very good but to be fair he is a feast or famine player not just on pantheon and stuff like that but yeah. like against lower levels of competition he can run over games well and, that, and like still like the darius game which is one of like his great games where you like help facilitate this comeback i still think a lot of the strength of that pick is that people just aren't used to playing against it and as the tournament goes on it's well, not going to look as good and it is a unique champion i think that people sometimes underestimate the inevitability that it brings to the table like an orn or a scion does just because of how powerful the passive is how he can just build full tank and still be a threat but um yeah i don't know i don't want to like over oversell broken blade here because i think that the big avenue for him in this lane is is wacky picks not like outplaying in the individual 1v1 well, I would say that for Broken Blade, like, I think that the community narrative has shifted kind of the reality of the situation a little, just because when you look at how Broken Blade is playing, he's fine. 
right? Like yeah. throughout playoffs, he played a lot of AP champions. He played Gragas, he played Kennen. There was another one that he played. It wasn't Gwen, it was something else. I forget exactly what it was, but he was like totally fine, right? Like it wasn't like he was ever really getting bodied and everyone will sit there and go, oh, we're not concerned about him. Domestically, we're concerned about him internationally. And I'm like, okay, he's going against Doran, which like, sure, Doran had a great finals, but even then, like as far as top laners go, you've kind of drawn a pretty good role as far as the potential top lane competition. The real concern that everyone should be talking about is caps. Cause like this guy has significantly underperformed recently. And like, even when you look at the loud series, he was the guy that was dying, right? Like. He got better in the PSG. His Gragas was much better, and I was much more appreciative of what we saw from him. Yeah. But uh, Caps is still a player that I have the most concern about. And against Chovy, when you think about that matchup, if you were to ask me right now, well, you are, I suppose I'm asking me right now, Chovy's going to smash Caps. Like, it's not even close. Like, I don't even think right now that Caps is playing at the level that is even comparable to Chovy. Okay, so, so, so when we started this section, you were like, hold on. Don't worry, Drake. Yeah, I gave you all the copium. Well, I stop. got you. So, I don't feel like you got me. You just told me that the Western yeah. Goat is about to get blasted. Yeah, yeah. I feel like quite opposite of the you got me. Yeah. You just didn't You didn't pick up on the copium because yeah. he's not going to play the skill matchup. Yeah. Like, if Chovy would destroy him in a skill Nautilus. matchup, we're not going to play a skill matchup. We're going to play Nautilus. Like, you, like, and then I'm going to play Galio, and then I'm going to play Gragas. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to sidestep Yeah, Gragas, Galio, Nautilus, Sejuani mid. All those mid, th- slam him, you know? I mean, I have so much faith in Hans Summer. Like, Hans Summer, Mickey, that bot lane i believe in them internationally so the the broken blade one i think it's like it's he's one of these players where it's almost impossible to find like the middle ground which is accurate because like the haters are like this guy sucks all yes. eu tops suck you guys and correct like, I, I heard that narrative so much and i came in this event and i was like your tops are fine like broken yeah, blade's playing very well yeah. against like he's <laughs> yeah. smashing people and like I, i'm pretty relatively confident he in also used to play for, he won in na as well like, yeah, like, yeah i know he's i watched him play yeah. time. I he's, think he's like, a good player it's true that we're in the gray area because while i don't think he was terrible domestically he did have a lot of lanes where he fell uh, really far behind often in isolation and again we can go farther back and say hey that's the draft and he was given an unfortunate matchup but still like Massive CS discrepancies aren't. But going into the series, is Broken Blade versus Doran really what you're looking at and going, I, I don't think, think the... that make or breaks the series. Right, no. that's well, what I'm saying. Right. Like, but like, then I'm not going to tell you that Broken Blade's great. I'm going to tell you that Broken Blade probably doesn't matter in this matchup. Right, like, this exactly. Is, this is not the matchup either way that I'm going to hang my hat on like Broken Blade anyway. I think that the most important matchup is, so Yike, he's, he's played against like, how do I explain? Like, he's played against Bo. He's played against El Yoya. He played against like our junglers like Yankos was like one of our best performing junglers and he only played nine games during the regular season like the jungle competition that Yike has experienced so far like don't get me wrong Yike is very good but I think Peanut is a slightly different level of veteran yeah, Peanut than remember what he's that used Bo to. does not speak the same language as his mid laner yeah. which might make some of those early game coordination plays uh some of those hiccups that we saw make a more sense whereas uh and it's I'm not, not really a language not or like, a time playing together gap for these two it's guys. It's not like I've lost all faith in Yike or anything. It's just that the mid jungle, which I think is so important in this meta, who do I have more faith in right now? It is definitely Peanut and Trovi. Like that mid jungle duo, I think is like just the clear advantage in this series. And if you assume that like top is even and bot, I think it's fair to say can be considered even given Hans and Mickey's yeah, pedigree like, and performance draft right? is like, a lot though but yeah, yeah obviously yeah, yeah, draft sure, is sure, always sure, a performance sure. but like with their pedigree and history I think they it's fair to say they won't grief it yeah in theory like I've seen Mickey grief it before but no, like Mickey does I mean like but like come on like, but like if you just like in me in my opinion the biggest discrepancy exists in mid jungle that is where my biggest concern and comes G2 from and G2 have I think yet to play a single game of Felios this entire year which means they're either banning or they're well, having so to run against them every single game That that's like the mid jungle one I understand the concern Bot is the, the biggest question mark actually for me in that sense where like I think Pay's is really good. Yeah, sure. I really like him. And I, while I also like Hans and Mickey and they have like the unique picks and stuff and I think they can make lanes more like kill lane focused than just like standard trading and laning patterns. Like I would wonder how that's going to go if, you know, you're just playing Zaya or Rakan and then like Zeri or Andy. Yeah, like these kinds of lanes that we've seen a lot of with Lucian Nami's these kinds of things. I think in a world where you're just looking at the isolated 2v2, I have a ton of faith in Hans and Mickey because I think that they yeah. care a lot about that 2v2. They really like that's something that Mickey's always put a ton of effort into. It's something he thinks about a lot. Um, you know, he talked about his relationship with Carrie, something he talks to like the best supports in the world about. So I just like, I trust, trust them in 2v2. The question is, how do they then fit into G2's greater draft strategy? And like, what do they want? They feel, I will say sometimes they feel like an afterthought. 
yeah, throw it out there where I'm like their bot lane just like draft something. In, like, in winter, it was a much bigger focus, but in spring, it's definitely shifted for yeah, sure. Yeah, people talk about the Draven, but I don't think it's necessarily about the Draven. It's just like you've seen games. It is convenient that we, that they, I say we, <laughs> that they always draft a uh, a Draven man. It, it's, it is nice, it and that's the strength. Yeah, yeah, for sure that's a positive thing. But like you can see, like I think part of the reason why they love Lucian and Ami so much and straight away from other things is they just want their bot lane to be able to just win in isolation. And that's great. I don't think they'll get their hands on those picks, but it's just like... Sometimes I feel like G2 really need their bot lane to just win in isolation, but don't necessarily have the, the resources left over in draft to give them a winning bottom lane because they look so much better when they have bot push. Like every I mean, part yeah. of their game plan looks so much better when they the have bot push. The best version of G2 was when they were diving bot like level three, level four, sure. level but five. Even if they don't like... dive, even if they just push the wave in so Mickey can roam up and help invade with Yike, like I think this team looks so much better, so much more control over the game, but it's just like, it's much, much harder to do. Okay, you EU fanboys put your money where your mouth is where is this series going is it do you believe in the g2 magic still a little bit you got a little smirk there you feeling it i mean like i want to but i know for a fact that like it's just like it's very hard on paper for me to argue that g2 is going to beat gen g i think the gen g is like so good like the only argument which again credit to cadrell is this like it's really hard to have faith in that organization internationally. Like they do have a world title, obviously. I think they have two world titles actually. But in recent history, like they have struggled know, internationally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. yeah, again, it depends on how you want to perceive that team. But like in recent years, they have faltered when it comes. Um, when you expect them to perform and you expect them to be the favorites. And I think the G2 is a wild card that can... Uh, you know, you're right. I think it's going to come down to their jerseys. If they show up with those <laughs> tigers again, I know there's like a cute, a cute story of the origin of those tiger jerseys. Still hate them. <laughs> if I see yeah. it on stage at MSI, G2 wins the series. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a fan of the ha 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 jersey. I just really don't like the tigers. No, I, I, I heard the story. Someone explained to me like where it comes from and I was like, yeah, I still don't like that. <laughs> not, okay. not hitting for me on an emotional no, level. No, no, do you no. want me to pick first or do you want to no, pick no, first? No, no, So... I'll, I'll Am I allowed to do a fan and an analyst no, prediction? No, So I just have to pick one? No, yeah, don't worry, I got because you. Because your fan one's worthless because you're going to see G2. That's true. You're trying to get okay, out well, of free card. My professional opinion would be 3-1 uh, Gen G. 3-2 G2. You know why? Because... Oh. The people that don't like me are already going to discredit my opinion for yeah. good reasons. <laughs> and I'm a play-by-play -play caster, which yeah. they like to bring up. So, like, my analytical clout no. doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the thing you got to think about. Like, who's watching this and why do I care? You know, like, EU fans are watching this. True. I jumped through tables this whole split. You know, what? What is? what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm just saying you're not really committed because I have a feeling, production secret, those tables were meant to be jumped through. This one's not. This, this one's, one's just a shoddy not. piece of furniture. I'm just saying commit. <laughs> yeah, we got my audio equipment, my computer, which I'd be very sad to get fried. We're here for the fans. And Look, the fans want to hear G2 fans. Fiction. You're right. Betty said it, so I don't really need to recap anymore, True. but G2 are a wild card. Um, if they bust out something wild, I believe in their potential to win this series. I believe in their potential to catch Gen G off guard. Uh, is it the safe bet? No. Who wants safe? But you know what you do to support a wild card? You be a wild card, G2 fans. <laughs> Cut the brake line, just like Charlie Day. We're going full steam ahead. Wild card, What's baby. What's the number, though? Oh, 3-1. I said 3-2. Three, three, two. Two. Oh, <laughs> you got 3-1. Okay. Three, okay. Any, three, wow. Okay. This is a 3-0. I don't know what drugs you think are illegal in London, but 3-0. So one more thing I touch on before we close out is that there will be... A, you didn't give a number. Oh, yeah, give a number. I didn't even give a prediction, to, to technically. Bro, we're it's all like, dying on this all. It's like the Bambi. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> it's like, you know. No, you should say it. Honestly, right, okay. 3-1, uh, Gen G. 3-1? Uh, hey, we'll take that. We'll That's take a little a game. bit of EU, you know, a little EU favoritism. Did you say 3 -0? I said 3-1. Oh, hey, nice. Right. Same prediction. Uh, where I was going to go with that, though, was that uh, there's a loser's bracket now at MSI. Yes. And the first phase of games, even after these ones that we all just talked about happen, the losers and the winners will actually play on Saturday, Sunday, because all these are happening Tuesday through Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then this weekend, there'll be two best of fives yeah. on the Saturday, Sunday days. Correct. Um, and we'll have the the losers of these matchups playing. Now, the sad thing we have to acknowledge is that if, Civil yeah, wars, that if, may if all the things we predicted happen, uh, C9 me. will play Golden <laughs> except for you. You're, yeah. you're, you're the mad man. We, we need an upset because if there's no upsets, G2 will play Mad Lions. Mad Lions. And one of them will be eliminated. One of them will be eliminated. C9 will play Golden Guardians. One of them will be eliminated. Then 
G, uh, Gen G will play T1 in the winner side of that. The loser the, of that will play G2. No, 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 no. So the T1 Gen G actually, I'm pretty sure goes to the other yeah, side. You cross ball, oh, so you don't get a rematch. So, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but still, it's not going to be an EU NA matchup. Yeah. There's a chance we get none of those based off how this is seeded, which sucks. Yes. And then BLG will be playing obviously their opponent in a um, JDG, and so you're going to see rematches of all domestic matches we've seen before. But it depends on your perspective, because if you're um, an LCK LPL fan, you're like you, you got the best possible, <laughs> like because even though you'd have Gen G versus T1, they would then go into a losers bracket where they then wouldn't have to play against an LPL team again. But are you even happy because you don't get LPL versus LCK until winners bracket final? But that's what they want. Is that like, what they if, want? If, if, if I'm a think that's okay, the easiest guys, path I'm gonna be both. really honest with you. If Europe was number one in the world, okay? And we were the ones considered heavy favorites to get out of this group. And you told me that one of the two European teams was guaranteed to make top three MSI. I'm taking that, boys. I'm going no, to the moon. Why? Because that's the best, because the best no, region in the world. You're, you're, say, you're saying that, but right now you're using your bad EU brain. Yeah, that's you, the problem. You're because that's because if we're you're yeah. happy to make top <laughs> three, but if you're the best region in the world, you want to prove you don't understand. that. You don't understand. That's, we just want to make it as far as we can. That's true. They right, want to beat everybody because they can, <laughs> Betty. I know you forgot what it feels like. I have too, but they can beat everyone. Well, and on top of that, like the 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 Asia games that they play, you know, where you have like the teams playing against each other, that would not be fun if they all played domestically and they were like, "You're our chosen guy. Get out there." You know, like it's fun to see the cross pollination of I mean, teams, no, regions, yeah. and matchups. And no, I mean, like I agree, it's it's frustrating that we don't yeah. get to see more cross pollination. Like, if <laughs> I, I love the suggestion that I saw that if you just swapped T1. Uh, mad with the C9 BLG, you would have like completely cross pollination between the yeah, two brackets. Yeah, yeah, I think it's something to look forward to maybe in the future. Yeah, uh, it it feels like something that like now that we've seen what feels like the worst possible bracket scenario. Like I'm not gonna say what the change would look like for the future, but if we do keep this format, and obviously like this is the first well, time through this format, so no judgment. Like people mm -hmm. are gonna miss things, um, or be okay with this draw. I don't know. Depends on who you are. Um, you know, you can. I wouldn't be surprised to see changes in the future. But like the the other thing is like the reality is that seeding is always going to complicate things as well because I know like many people also rate T one as one of the best teams in the tournament. If they had seeded into JDG, a lot of people would consider that unfair, right? Because it's the same yeah. principle as um, as like when Invictus Gaming and KT met in the quarterfinals, right? Like but there's a losers bracket. I mean, of course there is a losers bracket, but that is like a significantly harder run. And in an ideal world, if you have proper seeding, you cool. wouldn't have to. Yeah, I think there's you, a case to be made to that point about like there's regional parity that we kind of pretend is there more than it is based off historical data yeah, yeah. Um, but that's why i also think having tools to try and protect and admittedly like more, I, or give make sure that we're seeing more cross regional yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's ultimately what these tournaments are about is not watching your finals again i mean ideally but like if if the goal is also just to just see the best league of legends teams play like then that's what we're getting right like I the don't top know teams if in the world you know golden guardians play again is <laughs> yeah. the best team yeah. in the world play yeah. to that point Betty. i mean wow, that's kind of selling out your arena there well you're i didn't want to say your guys because <laughs> then you get mad at me. Yeah. i still think it's old too. Yeah. I, I would say that like i think that every time we make a format i feel like we're, we're slowly getting better to having like the best possible format and one thing that i would love to see in the, like there's a lot of different options in the future i'm sure there's a lot of people on social media pitching different options whether it's small yeah, course, swaps or course. overall like overhauls into how things are decided it would be cool also to see like first seed lck or first seed whatever region one worlds last year like just pick your opponent sometimes that'll make it spicy maybe they team kill that's crazy but if you pick them it's a way better story than if you accidentally run into them yeah the the only good news I say the only good news. There's lots of other the good news. The only good news is, <laughs> is that, that um, double like, <laughs> no, so much good news. I mean, it's um, like, obviously everyone has very clear expectations, but the beauty of an international competition is the gap between the finals and the tournament, except for LEC, <laughs> is very long. And yeah. teams always look different, like... I don't know how many times in international competition people have said LPL is going to dominate, LPL is the favorites, and then you know you just yeah, mentioned they, the collapse, team randomly um, close, and then yeah. the fact that like DRX at Worlds last year made it all the way to the finals, like the year that both NA and EU won both of their semifinals. Like I'm not saying that it's consistent, but and it's not something that you should like realistically expect. And I think there are expectations. It's still not the safe bet, but there's so but much like, we don't know. There's right a now. lot. There's so there's enough unknown to warrant that. Like I can still see these best of fives going the way that you don't expect like i wouldn't be surprised if g2 beat a gen g for yeah, example exactly i would say 
there's been um, zero tournaments that expectations have not been defied. Right. Despite it being the theme <laughs> of this one, I would say there's but no one has ever, I mean, there's a couple perfect bracket predictions at Worlds sometimes, but a lot of times there's none actually. And Like the closest, I think, the one that came to mind was 2019 when everyone expected FPX T1 and G2 to be the top three and all three of them did make top three. But even then, Invictus Gaming was not expected to beat Griffin. And then Invictus Gaming took FPX to five games, right? So... Um, but that was the one that came to mind where like that kind of went to tournament expectations. But even then, you know, the, the path there is always a little different too. And yeah. so like if someone gets knocked out early and makes a loser's bracket run and at the end of the day, Genji lifts the trophy or something, but they lost to G2 at the beginning, it's still really hype. And, For sure. and then you start avoiding all these regional things. Like this, this is like a doomsday scenario where like you get this bracket draw and no upsets happen. Like we'll have to see what happens at the end of the yeah. day. And again, I'm the other big thing we talked about a few times is like, these teams aren't getting a chance to warm up in groups. They're going to come in at a level that we're going to predict entirely based on games against much weaker teams in the case of plans or games from a very long time ago. Domestically. Uh, domestically, you know. And so I just think there's a huge amount of variables here. I am ready and potentially excited to be completely wrong on all of my predictions except for the G2 one. I would like that one to come <laughs> true. Uh, everything else I'm okay being wrong on because it would mean a lot of our teams getting through. Uh, but ultimately, like we're just going to have to see what happens. I'm, I love that we have double elimination. I hope that it creates some really fantastic stories and some opportunities for cool all rematch. All I want from this tournament is a deep loser's bracket run that like justifies the existence of the loser's bracket. Because I know there are a lot of people who are like, why do you need a loser's bracket and this, this, that? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. just give us the give loser's us the, bracket. Give us the like JDG strikes down somebody and then they make the entire run all the way back to the yeah. finals to rematch. Matt loves make... loser's brackets. Matt loves loser's <laughs> brackets. It's on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what the That's narrative what they were is. Trying to. That's what G2 was trying to do. Wow, G1 smashed them, but that was exactly what Mad Lions wanted. <laughs> anyway, MSI resumes uh, this Tuesday, 1 p.m. We're kicking off with Gen G versus G2. The entire schedule so is up later now. Again, just to clarify. Yes, the entire G2 schedule yeah. is up now at lolesports.com. On weekdays, it is 1 p.m. British time, British Standard Time, I believe. Uh, and then weekends are an hour earlier. That's starting at noon. Are Double you, best of fives on the weekend. Are you sh I don't know what time those start. They might even be even earlier on the there, Saturday. Um, there might be a chance the, the weekend ones one, are. One on the weekend. One hour sooner, <laughs> noon. My producer is there. We just broke the fourth wall. Yeah. We're in a room. There are cameras. Yeah. You're not just sitting here with us. This stuff happens. Yeah. I was 100% confident in my noon call. No. Then he questioned me. We had to ask for backup. It's noon. It okay. starts on it's noon on noon. the weekends. Noon on the weekends. Cool. Um, We're good. Of course, remember, we need comments. Really important for the, the YouTube. So tell us who you think is most likely to upset. Gentlemen, who you think is most likely to upset? Like their fan base or like win against their opponent? The winner against their opponent. <laughs> I was going to say T1 for the fan base. Yeah. Both <laughs> both <laughs> both <laughs> G2. Let's go. <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Just get those, you know, get Thanks. those comments. This in. has been Die For You, episode two. We'll be back with more coverage throughout the tournament. But for now, brace yourself. The best of fives are coming. They're coming in hot and fast. What is going to happen? We mostly told you, but maybe we we're wrong. We're really you, yeah. hoping we hope we're, we're wrong. End the yeah, episode. Stop talking. <laughs> Bye. My favorite strategy is I keep talking and they and cut they, me they off at some point. They play you off with the music, they play me off. And you could just like leave the if you wanted to. You could just get up and then... It makes it dynamic. Daniel and I would be here just chatting away. That was a cue for you to leave, Mark. Mark, why don't you just go away? Mark. <laughs> In your own time. You can just leave whenever you want, Mark. You can just leave. Mark, are you? <laughs> okay, time for our Time for the Dark Souls podcast. Kick it off.